Hi, my name is Lisa Watts. Some people know me on Facebook as Lisa Blake Watts. I am a member of Aota Cope. Um, I had a horrible thing happen to me 11 years ago, but let me start off with telling you about me. I was born July 10th, 1965. I was born in Dorchester, Mass. I was born at Boston City Hospital. I grew up South Shore my whole life. I got married in September of 92 to a wonderful man. Um, we're actually celebrating 30 years this September. We have two children, um, one's 20 and one's 23. We have a great life here um, down near the Cape. We have you know, a great community where we live, thankfully. Um, we have a really good life. We've always been very active with our boys and just, you know, we love our life. But then something tragic happened. Um, on July 6th, sorry, 26th, 2011, my husband had gone to bed. He wasn't feeling well. And he never takes sleeping pills. But that night, he wasn't feeling well and he took a half a sleeping pill. It was around midnight and I was getting ready to go to bed. And I stood up from my computer and I got a pain like nothing I felt. Now I've had neck and shoulder surgeries. This I knew was different. The pain started in my neck and it shot around my back in between my shoulder blades and then went around and right into my stomach. I felt like someone was knifing me. I couldn't breathe. It was just all so sudden and so painful. I literally had to crawl up the stairs on my hands and knees and went into my bedroom and was trying to wake up my husband. I was at the bottom of the bed and I was literally banging on the bed trying to wake him up. And it took a few minutes because of the sleeping pill. Eventually, he finally woke up and, you know, he was asking me what was going on. And I just kept mouthing, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. I can't breathe. And after a minute, he called the ambulance and the ambulance showed up and, you know, gave me the oxygen and got me in the ambulance. Seemed like forever, but they finally got me to the hospital. I went to Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and they were wonderful. But for the fact that the Ritter rules existed, thank you, Amy Yazbek. The very first thing they did was chest x-rays. Within probably an hour, I had a doctor in my room with me and my husband telling me I had an aortic dissection. I was a little confused because I know I had heard the word, but I didn't really, you know, know. So I looked at my husband and I looked at the doctor and the doctor said, it's what John Ritter had. I said, but John Ritter died. And he said, I know. We have gotta get you to Boston Medical Center right away. We're gonna call a med flight. Unfortunately, it was pouring and they couldn't call the med flight. So they had to call a med flight ambulance, which is they have, I guess, a nurse on board. It's more dire. Um, and while I was getting prepped, the doctor told my husband, this is, this is dire, she's, she's could be dying. So eventually they got me in the ambulance, got me to Boston Medical Center, and they did every possible test, CAT scan, PET scan, MRI, x-rays. Finally, the doctor came out and he told me that I had an aortic, a thoracic abdominal aortic aneurysm dissection. I literally dissected from the bottom of my arch all the way past the iliac into my right leg. At this point, it was 2.4. The doctors for 10 days in ICU managed to monitor me on meds and I didn't need surgery. I was lucky. I went home. About five weeks later, I had another event. I don't know what happened. All of a sudden I had pain, got rushed to the hospital again. Um, once again, they thought I was dissecting again. They sent me to Boston Medical. They kept me overnight. Didn't do any tests or anything, just monitored me, said I was fine, sent me home the next day. That was August 28th. September 6th, 2011, it was probably my boy's third day of school. I was in the shower, it was around 11 o'clock, um, and all of a sudden, the pain, again, it just hit out of nowhere. 
I was completely covered head to toe in soap. I jumped out of the shower because I knew, I knew this was really bad. I felt a tearing. Jumped out of the shower, threw my, my nightgown on over my soapy body. And luckily I live in condos that are adjacent. They're like 10 units side by side. My neighbor knew my circumstances. I couldn't talk. I ran over to my neighbor's house and banged on her door and she looked at me and she said, oh my God, do you need help? And I said, yes. And luckily she knew exactly what to do. She called an ambulance. Um, once again, sent to Beth Israel Deepness. And after several hours and several more tests, they said, we gotta send you to you know, Boston Medical Center again. This time it was a little bit different. I got to Boston Medical Center. I had sent my husband home to be with my kids because I was more worried about their fear. I didn't want them to be alone and my mother and my sisters were with me. So I sent my husband home. And after several tests, I saw the doctor talking to my mother and my two sisters. They were about 20 feet away from me. And my mother's back was to me and I could see from the back that she was crying and that she was scared. And I started screaming, tell me, tell me, don't tell them, tell me what's going on. And the doctor came over to me and he said, you have a very large tear just below your aorta. It's in your thorax and it's in your abdomen and you're internally bleeding. You've already lost half your liver and half your right kidney. And if it goes down any further and you lose any of your intestines or it hits your bowels, you're gonna die. So I had that decision. I had to make, you know, make a decision, do emergency surgery. So as they were prepping me, my mother and my two sisters come over and they, you know, were talking to me. And I looked at the doctor and I said, What are the chances that I won't make it? And he said, 95%. I said, No, 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 that I won't make it. And he said, 95%. He goes, you've got to say goodbyes. So I turned to my mother and my sisters. And I gave them messages for my husband and my sons. And I gave them messages and I told them goodbye. And I think for the first time in my life at 46 year old, I looked at my mother and said, mommy, I am so scared. And she said, I know, I know, but you're going to be okay. And I remember being wheeled out and seeing their faces and the fear on their faces. And I knew, I'm like, this is not appendix. This is not minor. This is a major thing. So I woke up. First thing I did was grab my chest and I noticed I hadn't been cut open. And the doctor was there and I said, oh, you know, I'm not cut open. And he goes, nope. And I said, and I'm alive. And he said, yep. And I said, but I wasn't. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, I feel like I died for a minute. I'm not like see the light type of person. That's not me. I'm, I'm not one of this. But um, I saw my dad. I saw his face and telling me to fight. And, you know, I don't believe that was a big white light. I believe that was me, my dad, in my head telling me to fight. And I did. And I fought. I had died on the table for a minute, came back. I was alive. <laughs> I, can't, I don't know how, but I managed to survive a tear from the bottom of my aorta. Probably the length of the top of my ribs to the bottom of my ribs is um, now stent and graft. And it was really severe and I almost bled to death. And at that point, the aneurysm, I think, was about 3.4. That was the last event. Um, it was so amazing because February of 2012, I got a phone call one night. I was in the bathtub. My husband knocks on the door and he says, Lisa, you have a phone call. And I said, I'm in the tub. He goes, trust me, you're going to want to take it. I get out of the tub and I'm in a towel on my bed, freezing. I answer the phone and I hear, Lisa, are you naked? I was like, what? Who is this? Amy Yazbeck. Amy called me to tell me that she thought it was amazing how I survived not only a dissection, but a rupture and that I beat the odds. And she called to tell me I was a miracle. We talked on the phone for about 45 minutes. She was incredible. 
She was absolute. She was so funny. She loved my Boston accent. And she's been amazing. And since my dissection, I have joined the John Ritter Foundation in Aortic Warriors, in Aortic Hope. And I don't know what I would do without all those people, without Peter Sy and without Karen and Betsy and Greg. May he rest in peace. And Danny and the friends that we've lost. We've lost Robert and I lost one of my best friends in the entire world, Joel. And I have more friends now that I've ever had in my life. And Kimberly, I love you, girl. You know it. And yes, I lost a lot, but I gained a lot too. I gained this amazing community of people that I have, that I have to go to, that I can, you know, have be there for me when I have my days, you know. There are days when I just can't function. That I just am so tired and and then there are days where just the PTSD kicks in. I don't want to go anywhere or do anything because I'm so afraid something's going to happen. There's so much change that happens to your life. The yearly doctor visits and the CAT scans. But I can't complain about that because I'm here. I'm here to tell you my story. And I'm here to tell you people survive this and they fight. And they can get on with their lives. And I was so lucky that I got to see my boy graduate two years ago. I never thought I'd be lucky enough to be at his graduation. And I'm seeing my kids flourish. And I just, I can't even believe how lucky I am. And to everybody that I have met, all my friends, I love you guys. I don't know what I would do without you. And that's my story. Right now I'm at 3.8 and standing. And that's it.